Let's get into it. So, Bayer and Monsanto are merging. Two of the biggest companies, Bayer is mostly famous for pharmacy pills and for healthcare. Healthcare. Uh, Monsanto is mostly known for, I guess, Roundup. You know, that's a, a pesticide. They're known for controlling the seed companies. They're known for their food and agriculture, but they're also into pharmacy as well, and they've done a lot of stuff. So Bayer and Monsanto, two major companies. Bayer is about to buy Monsanto for $63 billion, and they're about to delete the Monsanto name. So there's a lot of activists who care about Monsanto. There's a lot of politicians who get paid by Monsanto. You're not going to hear the word Monsanto very often anymore because they're about to disappear. Their whole brand is going to get swallowed alive by Bayer and Monsanto. So these are two major corporations, multi-billion dollar corporations that spend food, drugs, health, seeds, you know, pesticides, uh, health care. There's, there's not that much that these companies don't do. So let's go over a very important history of Bayer and Monsanto that a lot of people don't know. Who are these companies and what have they done? And have they ever got held accountable for them? So in 1898, Bayer was a German drug company, but Bayer commercialized heroin. So Bayer is responsible or accomplished wise they are the first person, the first company to commercialize heroin from 1898 to uh, 1910. That's what Bayer was doing, commercializing heroin. Now, if you do heroin, of course, you know, you'll go to jail. If you sell heroin, you'll go to jail. But that's what Bayer did for 12 years. And I'm not, I'm not holding it against them. You know what I'm saying? It was the 1800s, 1900s, whatever. Just commercialize heroism. Her heroism, I'm sorry, heroin. That's what they did. So in 1898 to, to 1910... Bayer was commercializing heroin. Let's move forward to World War II. During World War II, Bayer owned slave labor factories built adjacent to German concentration camps. So that's what Bayer was doing during World War II, is they were running slave labor in factories right next to German concentration camps. They purchased prisoners for human experimentation of their new sleep-inducing drug, and all of the prisoners that they bought and purchased died. So... That's what they were doing during World War II. They were running slave labor, <laughs> slave labor factories next to German concentration camps and purchasing prisoners to human experiment on sleep-inducing drugs, and all of them died. I'm repeating it a few times so it sinks in. Employees frequently said, this is straight off Wikipedia, so you know you could check it out, and I, I checked out some other sources too. Employees frequently said, if you don't work faster, you'll be gassed. So... That's what they were doing during World War II, telling their employees that were already slave labor prisoners, basically, if you don't work faster, we're going to gas you. Uh, they held a large investment in Degish, which is a German company, which designed Zyklon B, used to gas and kill prisoners during the Holocaust. So not only did they have adjacent factories right next to uh, concentration camps, most famously Auschwitz, but they were also investing in a company which was designing the weapon used to gas and kill prisoners during the Holocaust. So that's who Bayer is. They commercialized heroin, heroin. They ran slave labor factories next to German concentration camps, invested in uh, companies that were gassing and killing prisoners, and also were doing experiments on prisoners that killed every single person that tried it. So... You know, you would think that their, their history can't get much worse and darker than that, but we're not even into the 1970s and 80s yet. So, you know, after World War II, they knowingly sold, this, and this is out of CBS and Guardian. This is mainstream news. You can search what I'm saying right here, and you can find it in mainstream news. According to American mainstream newspapers, Bayer, uh, a division of Bayer, knowingly sold blood clotting agents infected with HIV to Asia and Latin America after withdrawing them from U U.S. and Europe. So, you know, according to these reports, they knew that these blood clotting agents were infected with HIV. So they said, you know, we don't want to sell them in Europe and the United States. Let's just sell them to Asia and Latin America. Pretty disgusting stuff, but... To be fair, Bayer says it's always behaved ethically and humanely. So remember, that's what the U.S. newspaper said, that they were selling HIV-infected blood clot uh, medicine to, HIV, or, sorry, to Latin America and Asia. But Bayer said it's always behaved ethically and humanely. So I don't know exactly what you call 
commercializing heroin, uh, slave labor, purchasing prisoners and killing them with drugs, and you know, telling people if you don't work faster, you'll be gassed, and holding you know, large investments in Zyklon B, which used to gas and kill prisoners. But according to them, they've always behaved eth ethically and humanely. So let's go to Bayer in the modern era, because a lot of people don't know what I just said. I mean, this is, this is a pretty dark company with a very, very dark history. And I'm not knocking them for all these things. I'm not God. I'm not a police officer. I'm not an investment uh, investigation agent. I'm not the president of the United States. You know, the past is the past. But what really concerns me before I move on to what they're doing now is that no one even knows this stuff and no one even questions them. Um, so it's just very, very confusing. I do also want to say, too, you could Google Operation Paperclip. That's something that happened after World War II as well. Operation Paperclip, thousands of Nazi and German scientists and top people, you know, who, who were involved in the moon, you know, the moon expedition of the United States, scientists, all these types of people, they moved to the United States. So, you know, after Nazi Germany fell, they didn't really fall. They like all came to the United States. I mean, Google Operation Paperclip and you can find that in mainstream publications. That's just what happened. So... Uh, you know, no one thinks about this stuff. No one knows this stuff. It's Trump. Roseanne said something mean. Wanda Sykes called Trump an orangutan. It's like, who cares? I don't care if it comes black, white, Latino, you know, this, left, right. I, like, what's happening? Because this is how they get away with doing stuff like this, is everyone's so concerned about their feelings, and they don't even understand about two of the biggest companies that control the food and drug market are literally merging. And, and you think this is bad? Wait till I get to Monsanto. I mean, they got very, very dark paths. So now, what does Bayer own now? Bayer owns crop science, which is pesticides, seeds, and plant uh, technology, genetically engineering of food. So now Bayer, who is uh, responsible for commercialized heroin, drugs, slave labor, uh, you know, uh, Nazi activities, and, you know, selling HIV to people, they're involved in your pesticides, your seeds, and your plant technology, and genetically engineering of food. And they're about to be involved in it more because they just bought the biggest genetically engineering company and food company in the world, Monsanto. So that's what they're doing now. They're also involved in consumer health and animal health and even personal health care that you probably didn't even know. What companies does Bayer own? They own Aleve, the headache medicine. They own Coppertone, the sunblock. So if you ever put on Coppertone, that's Bayer. Uh, they own food, su uh, food supplements, Redoxin and Baraka. Uh, birth control pills, Yaz and Yasmin, many, many more. They're involved in animal health care, which is uh, Advantage Multi-Topical Solution they own, K9 Advantix they own. I mean, they're a massive, massive company that owns, you know, I've, I've done so many times where I just turn around the drug or I turn around the sunblock and I'm like, oh, Bayer owns this? So they're all over your food markets. Um, they own, you know, a lot of probably behind the scenes in the food and they're about to own virtually everything when they buy Monsanto. So... That's who Bayer is. I'm going to go on to Monsanto now. Remember, Bayer, this company that I just mentioned, that commercialized heroin in, in the 18, 1900s, uh, had slave labor factories built adjacent to German concentration camps, purchased prisoners, so literally purchased human beings, that's like literally trafficking and slave labor, uh, forced them to human experiment and sleep-induced drugs. They all died. Uh, you know, held large investments in companies used to gas and kill prisoners during the Holocaust, knowingly sold blood clotting agents infected with HIV to Asian and Latin America. This company, uh, you know, already owns a lot in the United States, and they're about to buy Monsanto. So, very, very interesting, and just, I would say, a little bit alarming, or, or something that maybe people should talk about and think about, but, you know, I'm sure they won't. I'm sure they'll be mad about tweets and their feelings, and they're going to sit on their cell phones and drink their Starbucks coffee and say, oh my goodness, capitalism's so bad. I wish we had socialism. I mean, I don't even know, man. I just don't think higher taxes is, is going to really help this type of stuff. So all I'm saying is, you know, pay attention to this stuff. I'm not saying they are the same company they were in the 1900s. I'm not suggesting that they are the same company they were in the 1970s and 1960s. But I'm just trying to figure out, as an American citizen, who are they? What are they doing now? Are they still doing inhumane stuff like that? And how bad is it going to get now that they're buying Monsanto? On to Monsanto. You guys might know Monsanto. They own a lot of seeds. They own a lot of the farming industry. They're uh, huge in genetically engineering food. But where did Monsanto start from? So Monsanto started in 1901 in St. Louis as a chemical company. So they never started as a food company. They started as a chemical company. Their first products were artificial sweetener, um, sac saccharin, 
caffeine and vanilla. So they started with chemicals and putting chemicals into drinks, basically. Uh, in 1919, they partnered with a European company to expand their produce to aspirin and rubber processing chemicals. So they started with chemicals in artificial sweeteners and caffeine and vanilla to add to food and drinks. And then they expanded to rubber producing chemicals and aspirin. Very interesting combo. On that note, I want to say too, it's always been a weird combo to me. The Food and Drug Administration, I get that food can be a drug, it can heal you. But it's like, shouldn't we have two separate industries for food and drug? It's like, they've always been grouped up in the strangest way and I never understood that. Anyway, uh, they, bought a, they bought a few companies like... At, from 1901 to 1919 into the 1930s, they started buying up a lot of companies. Same with Bayer. I mean, they probably purchased dozens of, of smaller companies. So the biggest one was they bought a chemical company. This is Monsanto. They bought a chemical company and acquired Thomas and Holkwa Laboratories. Uh, the main reason that they did that is they wanted to get one of the founders on board. His name was Charles Allen Thomas. They wanted him under Monsanto. Not only did they want that company, but they like just wanted him. So they bought his entire company and made him the president of Monsanto. And he, he was running the board for a while. His name was Charles Allen Thomas. And Monsanto basically bought his company and bought him on board. So why is Charles Alice, Allen Thomas important? This is the uh, ex-president of Monsanto. And he was on the chair, the board chair. for He worked for Monsanto the rest of his life after they, they purchased him. Thomas was called into a meeting in Washington, D.C., with the commander of the Manhattan Project, the president of Harvard University, and the chief uh, of, uh, I'm sorry, the chairman of the National Defense um, Research Committee. So what was the Manhattan Project? The Manhattan Project is when we develop nuclear weapons. So this is Monsanto going from making uh, chemicals in food, artificial sweetener, saccharin, caffeine, vanillin, rubber processing chemicals, aspirin, to then literally building nuclear weapons. This is Monsanto, ladies and gentlemen, who's being bought by Bayer, who I just told you about. So, you know, they were involved uh, in the Dayton Project, the Manhattan Project, and assisted in developing the first nuclear weapons. So not only drugs, they didn't even get into food. It was all chemicals and creating weapons. Uh, I do want to say on a positive note, they developed one of the first treatments for Parkinson's disease, so they were involved in medicine as well. They, they found a, a chemical or some sort of a combination that uh, allegedly helped with the treatment of Parkinson's disease. So, you know, we don't want to be Debbie Downers here. There's a, there's a pat on the back. Um, they're very famous for producing Agent Orange for the U.S. Army in Vietnam. If you know what Agent Orange is, it's a very, very uh, harsh chemical that they used in Vietnam. You know, we dropped it on a lot of people and it was... You know, they talk about chemical weapons now. They say, oh my God, we got to we gotta invade Syria because the president of Syria may or may not be using chemical weapons. Well, this was Monsanto producing Agent Orange, literally a chemical weapon that has very, very harsh effects on the people that it was used on. And it's even been passed down generations in like mental illness and deformations of the body. Very, very dark stuff. Something that you wouldn't want to be, you know, if someone told you that your the person who makes your bread or your eggs or your sandwiches or your meat, you know, what, it, or, or your vegetables or your fruits. If someone told you that they were also producing nuclear weapons and uh, Agent Orange, which is like, you know, ruined thousands of lives. I, I don't know anybody that would be like, oh, that's normal. But here we are in the United States of America and most people, either they don't know about this stuff or they have absolutely no idea, but this is who's running your food. The, uh, the same company that produced Agent Orange for the U.S. forces in Vietnam. On another positive note, they also created AstroTurf. So if you've ever played soccer or football on AstroTurf, you know, the fake artificial grass, you can thank Monsanto for that. So that's cool. Thank you. I've, I've played a lot of soccer games on AstroTurf, and, you know, it's, pretty, it's a pretty cool surface to play on. So thank you, Monsanto. I appreciate it. They were, in, they were involved in the designs of LEDs, electronic calculators, digital watches, and digital clocks. Very impressive, um, you know, on a positive note. In 1983, the Monsanto scientists were the first to genetically modify a plant cell. So if you're into genetically modified plants and crops, or you're not, doesn't matter. Monsanto had the first scientists to modify plant cells, and they eventually became very, very interested in that market. So 
most of the foods you eat and the plants you eat nowadays, unless you get them directly from a farm or a farmer's market, they're most likely genetically modified. I'm, I'm not saying all are, even organic. I actually grew up on a farm and uh, that's what my stepfather does. He's a, a farmer. So I know a little bit more. I worked on a farm for a year and did a, you know, labor, I guess, farm labor. Uh, even organic crops that you find at the supermarket, to be honest, they have that organic label, but I don't know how organic they truly are. You know, it's hard to mass produce at the level that they're doing and still make it organic. The only way to really know that you're getting organic food is to get it like directly from the farmer. Even at the farmer's market, they could just be hustlers buying it at the store and selling it to you. So I will say that like, you know, most food is, is either genetically modified, sprayed with chemicals or pesticides. It's very hard to get away from that type of stuff. Uh, even on a, on a level when it says organic, I don't know how organic it truly is. So in 1983, uh, Monsanto scientists genetically modified plant cells and they were the first ones to do that. They started buying up the seed market in the 1990s. A lot of farmers know who Monsanto is because they, they own a lot of the seeds. And if you own the seeds, you know, you can control the entire market. So uh, not only are they, you know, into weapons and foods and chemicals and all this stuff, but they're starting to close up the seed market and the genetically modified crop market. They're also very, very famous for glyphosate herbicides, aka Roundup, which is the chemical glyphosate. Um, it's an herbicide they spray on a lot of the plants. I don't know if they still do or, or they did before. I, honestly, I've lost count. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of controversy around Roundup because there, there's a lot of people that believe, excuse me, that Roundup causes cancer and possibly other diseases. And, you know, it's hard to really say what's going on. But when you have two companies like Bayer and Monsanto who have done all of the things that I just told you they did, it's hard to think that they really would care if their products were giving someone cancer. I mean, Bayer literally gave, you know, according to reports, like I said, I don't know the truth. According to reports, they gave people HIV pills that they knew were active because they wanted to make money. They've created, new, between Bayer and Monsanto, they've created nuclear weapons. They've created Agent Orange. They've literally taken prisoners. They've killed prisoners. They've been involved with Nazis. There's nothing terrible in history that you learn about that one of these two companies haven't somehow been involved in and they're now merging. So it's just hard for me to believe that they would really care about that stuff because historically it just seems like they haven't cared and I've never heard anyone talk about it. They don't talk about it on CNN or they don't talk about it really on Fox News or ABC or any of that stuff. You know, no one really deep dives into it. I think I saw the Young Turks talk about it. So Congratulations to the Young Turks. I'm not a fan of your socialism, but I appreciate you talking about Monsanto and Bayer a few years ago. Hopefully you're talking about it now. You know, I've seen very, very few journalists really weigh in on this stuff. And if they do, they do a huge uh, puff piece on this type of stuff. So, you know, it's just interesting when you find that Monsanto, who literally did all of that stuff that I just told you, and Bayer, who just did all of that stuff that I just told you, they're merging for $63 billion and you're never going to hear the word Monsanto again. And, you know, for all of the stuff that Bayer has done, nobody really talks about Bayer, which is fine. I'm not trying to start a big activism thing or whatever. But Monsanto was starting to get under fire. You know, I, I believe Barack Obama, you could, you could check me on this one, but I believe he took a lot of money from Monsanto, um, the lobbyists. Um, you know, a lot of activists were onto their genetically modified stuff and their roundup and, you know, all of the interesting things that Monsanto was doing. So, you know, that word Monsanto and that brand is going to completely disappear come Thursday because Bayer is buying them out. Like someone said, it's not a merger, it's a buyout. I mean, same, whether you're merging or buying out, what's really the difference? They're combining one way or another. But it's a $63 billion buyout, so you're not going to hear the word Monsanto anymore, but they're not disappearing. They're going into the hands of Bayer, who is responsible for some of the you know, most questionable things that any United States company has ever done, and they're becoming one. So, you know, I'm not a hater. I'm not a judger. You know, I, the past is the past or whatever. Uh, you know, I don't 
I'm not trying. I'm not. This is not my life. You know what I'm saying? So if you work for Bayer or Monsanto and you're you're mad and you're, oh my God, anomaly. Don't say that. Uh, I'm just telling you the history. I'm not. This is not like revolutionary stuff. I don't. I don't have to go onto Alex Jones to find this stuff. It's on the Wikipedia. It's literally on Bayer and Monsanto's Wikipedia. So it's not a big secret. You know, I'm just literally reading. You know, highlights from that and from the Guardian and a few from you know CBS News. So these are mainstream publications. I'm just letting people know. So that's happening this Thursday. Um, it's been happening for years. They've been trying to combine. And they're doing it. So a, a German started company involved in, you know, gassing people and killing prisoners and slave labor and all of this crazy stuff to a chemical company that created nuclear weapons, produced Agent Orange, um, you know, involved in the seed market. Um, now they're combining, which is making, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a complete monopoly. I don't know if that's true. But when it comes to seed, the seed market, Monsanto owned a large portion of the seed market, and now Bayer owns a big portion of the seed market. It's seeds, uh, you know, agriculture, genetically modified technology, and pharmaceuticals. It's just a major, major powerhouse to two companies that have the most questionable paths in the world. So, you know, I don't really worry about anything. I'm not really mad or concerned. You know, hopefully they have more stringent laws and hopefully the Trump administration and Jeff Sessions is paying attention to this stuff, but it's just a little bit concerning. I think their their history is incredibly fascinating. All of the things they've done I think is incredible that no one cares about this. And and that's what, you know, people get caught up in history real quick to wrap it up. Everyone gets mad at history. You know what I'm saying? They say, oh my goodness, I'm going to use history to justify my outrage in 2018. You'll see activists Oh no, that's okay for him to do because of history. Oh no, he can say what you can't say. Here's the double standard. He's allowed to be mad and be racist and be rude, but you can't be racist and mad and rude because, and I don't want to be, but I'm just saying this is what people say, because of history. But how come they only cherry pick certain parts of history and ignore the rest of history? If you want to look at history, every you know race and religion has a reason to be mad. I mean, you know, the Armenian genocide, they rounded up all the intellectuals and all the leaders in the Christian community and killed them all. And, you know, millions of Christians died in the Armenian genocide. So why are Christians not allowed to feel that way? That just happened in modern, you know, recent. I mean, you know, you have the Nazis with the Jewish people. You have Irish people. You have, like, people fleeing persecution from all over. I mean, you know, people in America having to deal with Monsanto and Bayer so it's like where are the activists who are so concerned with history how come they don't care about Monsanto and Bayer because their history is super alarming they're about to you know combine forces with 63 billion dollars on top of it and you know something just screams whoa let's pay attention to this stuff because I'm you know I, I know we could use history to guide us like I just read that stuff but history doesn't really matter what matters right now is what's happening now so I find that a lot of activists and phony people they say, oh my God, we got to talk about 500 years ago or 300 years ago or 100 years ago. But they only cherry pick certain parts of history out and a lot of parts that don't, you know, haven't translated over. And then they're ignoring like two major companies that run their food, that run their drugs. We have a huge opioid problem. We have a huge mental illness problem. We have a huge suicide problem. We have a huge pill problem. Everybody's losing their minds, you know what I'm saying? Weird crimes are on the rise, and no one, we have a huge obesity problem. Hmm, why do we have a huge drug and food problem? Maybe it's because, you know, Monsanto owns the food industry, and they just got off making chemicals, making rubber, you know, creating AstroTurf, making nuclear weapons, and, you know, making Agent Orange, and now they control your food industry. Why is everybody so drugged up? Well, maybe because a Nazi-era German, German company that enslaved people and gassed people they own your drug industry. Hmm, I wonder why everybody's so screwed up in America. It's not because you're mad about what happened 150 years ago. It's because you only put a microscope on things that happened that don't still matter, and you're ignoring 99% of history, and you're like ignoring like some of the craziest things that not only never went away, but they've literally just swallowed up more companies. So that's who's controlling your food. That's who's controlling you know a large portion of the drug industry. And maybe, just maybe, that correlates to the fact that we're the most unhealthy country in the world and, we're, and we have the biggest pill problem in the world. Hmm, and now we have a mental health problem. Just maybe your food, your diet, and your medicine 
has something to do with mental health and obesity. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe we should take everyone's guns away. Maybe we should close down the internet and shut off Facebook and put Hillary Clinton on office. Maybe that'll solve all your problems if Jimmy Kimmel tells you to make a Trump joke one more time. I don't know. Maybe that'll work, but maybe maybe something that I said today, maybe the history of these two companies, maybe the present day of these two companies, and maybe, you know, my analysis, maybe maybe just maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know for sure though. Thank you guys so much. God bless you. Uh, someone said, grow your own, own organics. That's great. If you can grow your food, grow your food. Uh, you know, if you could try to have some sort of a healthy diet habit, I'm not your mother or father. You know, I don't really care what you do, but I do say, you know, I, I, I definitely tend to try to personally stay away from certain things, especially when I'm not sure who these companies are. So I'm not, I'm not knocking Monsanto. I'm not knocking Bayer. I'm not hating on them. I'm literally just reading what's available via mainstream media about their history. And I do want to tell people, the activists, the people who hate Trump, the people who love Trump, the progressives, the liberals, conservatives, the this, the that, I don't know. Maybe maybe check out the, the food agriculture industry. Maybe check out the pharmacy industry and check out that this is one of the biggest mergers in modern history, not only for the U.S., but for the world. And I feel like the amount of coverage it's getting is like one one-thousandth of like a tweet that a 65-year-old Jewish woman said. And I'm not saying what she said was okay. I'm not saying what Trump says is perfect all the time. But I'm th these are the things that I'm saying that people, oh, taking out of context. I'm just saying what matters more is someone's mean tweet or bad tweet or like a hundred year history of somebody who's swallowing up your food and, and, and pharmacy industry. I don't know. I, I think it's a false equivalency, but you know, that's where I'm at. I appreciate you guys. God bless you. Have a good day. I'm going to post my links below if you'd like to support my news analysis. I have my donor box on my Patreon right below the title. I'm also going to post it in the comment section as soon as I sign off. I'm going to post my free email list. Thank you guys so much uh, for you know, signing up to my free email list. It's 100% free and now we can stay connected. I'm about to release my first book. I'm almost done publishing and, and getting my book out there. It's, it's, I don't want to give away the name, but my first novel is going to be, I won't even call it a novel, it's more a book. It's about being happy and creating success and breaking outside of the matrix. It's a total book about love. It has nothing to do with politics really, it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about here. It's for everybody. It's for the people of every race, religion, gender, and country. You know, it's my way of trying to give back to the world and show some love and do it in a way that I feel like is not like preachy. You know, I'm not like, oh, this is going to be perfect. You're going to be, you know, got to be spiritual. It's not like that. It's really down to earth. It's very humble. It's very easy. And it's just something to maybe like make our lives better and, and make ourselves a little happier. So that's my first book. It's coming out soon. Sign up to my free email list to know exactly when that comes out. Keep watching the live streams. Keep supporting you. Thank you, guys. I am forever blessed and grateful for your support. I'm out. I'll see you guys later or tomorrow.